Hey guys! So a number of you have requested for a video on how to use the Hobonichi original as a planner. So in this video, I'm going to present nine ways to do that. Now before I start, let me show you what the daily page in the Hobonichi original looks like. So you have the date in the box here, the month, the date, and the day in Japanese. And you also have the moon phase and the number of days that have passed in that year. Then next to the date box, you have an empty space. And below that, you have a 24-hour timeline that runs from 4 a.m. here to 4 a.m. here. The page is separated by a slightly darker line here. Uh, and the right column is slightly wider than the left column. Finally, there is a quote in Japanese at the bottom of the page, and you have that month's uh, calendar. So, now that you know what the daily layout in the original looks like, let's start with the first layout. Now, the first layout is a simple and functional one. At the top, you write the priorities of the day, then you plan out your day in the left column and then you write your task list in the right column. If you combine the work and personal uh, tasks in your planner, then you might want to separate it into two sections with the work at the top and the personal at the bottom or vice versa if you prefer. Now, I know that not everybody schedules their day, so instead, you might want to use the top space for events or appointments, and then you write your personal task list here, and then the work task list on the right-hand side. Now, at the bottom, it will give you space to write uh, notes uh, or daily review uh, or a review of how your day went. Now, uh, even if you don't want to schedule your day, you might still want to use the timeline for events or appointments. Now, in that case, you could circle the hour of the event or appointment, and then you write the specific time here, and then the event or appointment. You can also break down your to-do list into several categories. For example, things that are due that day, people that you need to contact for information or documents, things you're waiting for, uh, and then the administrative tasks that you have to do. At the top, you might want to write down the highlights of the day. And then right here, maybe you could include the meal prep for that day. Now, uh, instead of writing down events or appointments or schedules, uh, you might want to lock down what you actually did that day in the timeline. So let's say you are a university student and you could write down or record your academic related activities for that day and then tally the number of hours that you spent on each course at the bottom right here. You might also want to write down your expenses for that day here and then use the right column to write down any notes such as project meeting notes uh, and so on. Um, if you prefer to compare your planned schedule with what you actually did to see if there were any discrepancies, then you could use uh, the left column for your schedule and then the right column to lock down what you did and then you can compare them side by side. Now, this next layout uh, is also about logging your activities for that day, but it has a specific focus on Pomodoros. So, Pomodoro is a productivity technique. In its most basic form, a Pomodoro lasts 30 minutes. Uh, out of the 30 minutes, you work for 25 minutes and you rest for 5 minutes, and then you repeat another Pomodoro. So this layout comes from Honey Rose's bullet journal. I will link her channel in the description box below. I will also link her Instagram account in the description box below. Now, uh, in this layout, you first box up the timeline. So in this case, I boxed up from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. Now for each hour that you work, you put a stroke if you completed a Pomodoro and two strokes like this, 
if you completed two Pomodoro. So for example, from uh, nine to 10, I did two Pomodoros. So I put a cross, so two strokes. Uh, from 11 to 12, I only did one Pomodoro. So I put one stroke. Now at the end of the day, you count the number of strokes to tally your productivity for that day. In the right column, you write down your task list, uh, personal and work, and then your meal plan. At the top, you might want to write down a reminder for that day. Now, perhaps you are the kind that writes a master task list at the beginning of each week. But unlike the cousin, the original doesn't have a weekly layout. So one way you can deal with this is to treat the original as a a uh, regular notebook. So you ignore the uh, dates, instead you use the dates as page numbers. So what you can do is, you could write out the master task list in the daily pages, maybe separated by work and personal. Then on the next page, you write down the date at the top row, and then you wrap it lock bullet journal style. So you write down the information as it comes in, but you use different signifiers to identify different types of information. So for example, you might use checkboxes to signify tasks, uh, dashes to signify notes, um, triangles for personal tasks, circle for events, and stars for important information. Then the next day, you simply start from where you left off the previous day. Uh, you completely ignore the date here, and then you write the date for the next day, and then you start rapid logging right here again. Now this way, you have the flexibility of using as much or as little space as you need for that day. And if you have extra space, then you might use uh, that extra space for uh, bullet journal collections. Right. So now if you prefer to use one page a day, so each daily page for a day, and you don't want to do this, this uh, type of layout, then uh, Paper and Pink, uh, her Instagram is going to be in the description box below, uh, she offers a solution. So what you do is you take an index card, index card like this, you write down the master task list in the index card. You tape it uh, to the first page of the week with washi tape. Then at the end of the week, you remove this, uh, transfer all the undone tasks to the index card for the next week, and you do the same for the next week. This way, you can still use one daily page per day and still have the master task list to refer to. Right. So now if you plan to use the original specifically for health, then you might want to use the top here for tracking health statistics, the left side here for meal planning, and then the right side here for exercise logs. Finally, if you plan to use your original as a daily journal, then you might want to write down one thing you are grateful for for that day at the top of the page. And then you might want to summarize your day, such as a, the number of steps that you walked, uh, the household chores that you performed, which book of the, uh, which page of a book you stopped at, and, and so on. And then you write a paragraph or two about your thoughts for that day. Right. So those are the nine ways. Uh, I hope this video has sparked out some ideas in your mind on how to use the original as a planner. If you like my content, please subscribe. Also, please check out my Instagram account. I uh, post more um, than just Hobonichi stuff there. So uh, please check it out. The link is in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.